So this is local Penang coffee. They take the coffee and they, um, they mix it with margarine and sugar and sesame seeds. Today I'm photographing several artisans in my home of Penang, Malaysia. A few of them have even been designated as to what UNESCO calls Penang's intangible heritage. Now the camera that I'm using is a brand new camera. In fact, it's just been released today. They say good things come in small packages, right? Well, today we're going to find out if this is true with the release of Fujifilm's smallest X-series camera along with their lightest XF lens. It's the long overdue XE4 and the new XF 27 millimeter Mark II lens. This is one of the world heritage artists. This is Mr. Li. He's a traditional Chinese uh, sign painter. He carves them, lacquers them. So this is glue, right, Mr. Li? And you'll put gold leaf on that later. Thank you. 
is always difficult. Okay. Oh, okay. So I think that's, uh, that's a wrap for the day. I think we've got some, some pretty good stuff. And uh, why don't we go back to my house and we can talk about this little guy. Well, welcome to my home. So let's take a minute and let's talk about this little guy. So the, the XE4 is the rangefinder styled little brother to the X series flagship, the X Pro 3, except it doesn't have the optical viewfinder. Now I like to think of this little guy as sort of the love child between the X Pro series and the X100 series. And I think that's, uh, that's pretty accurate actually. But now this isn't just a small camera. This is a tiny one at only 121.3 millimeters wide, 72.9 in height, 32.7 in depth, weighing in at only 365 grams. This is just a little guy. Fuji is marketing this camera as sort of the perfect vacation camera. But the question is, is it the ultimate camera and lens for the minimalist traveler? Well, let's look at it and see if we can determine if it is. Fuji has planted the XE4 right in the middle of the consumer and hobbyist market. But now, don't let that fool you, because while it may lack some of the bells and whistles of the flagship cameras like the X-T4 or the X-Pro3, it still sports many of the same features, like the 26 megapixel back illuminated X-Trans CMOS 4 sensor. The new XE4 has 100% coverage of its phase detection AF. So at the guts of this little guy is the X processor four. Now the LCD monitor is the same size, it's three inches that was on the XE3. The viewfinder, however, has now 2.36 million dots resolution. Now the battery is not the new battery found in the X-T4, but it's the standard NPW126S. Now the camera also gives user access to all of the now famous uh, Fujifilm simulations. I think there's like 18 of them now, and uh, they have all those to choose from. If rapid shooting is something that you want, the XE4 can do eight frames a second burst shooting using manual shutter with a maximum of 20 frames burst a second on electronic shutter without any crop. Now, if you don't mind a 1.25 crop, you can get up to 30 frames a second. One of the goals they had when making this camera was to, was to make this even lighter than the X-E3, the previous version. Uh, and they managed to do it. Now, the way they did it is, and I don't know if you can see this, but they, they really straightened out a lot of the lines. And, um, and th they did this by removing the front grip. They took off the, the thumb grip and they even, took away the rear control dial. Now, there's some people that are not gonna like this. They like to have a grip like this. And, you know, for me, it, you know, it doesn't really bother me. I do miss the thumb grip. I wish there was, but you know, you can buy these hot shoe thumb grips and uh, I think it would actually work perfect for this. Now, normally I don't use the hot shoe thumb grip because I normally have on my cameras, um, well, not normally necessarily, but often, I'll have a, um, a flash trigger in the hot shoe. So, but I don't see myself using this camera for a lot of off-camera flash. So um, I, I don't know, I don't think that's gonna be an issue for me. I think the, a, a hot shoe thumb grip on this camera could really, really feel great. I think it would look good as well. Now, one of the coolest things about this camera is the rear LCD screen and you can see it's very reminiscent of the X100V how it's just very flush to the body right in fact the only reason you'd know it was a flip screen is this little thumb tab right here now what's really neat about this is it's a 180 degree uh, tilt so you can pull it out like this and I don't know if you watched me shooting in the video here ahead uh, I shot a lot of it like this like a waist level finder or out here as a waist level finder, but you can also then flip it up and use it for um, selfie mode in a sense or for vlogging. It's, uh, it's pretty nice. 
Um, I think this is a, a great addition, and I really think right here, this, this makes the camera in many ways. Now the side ports, you've got, uh, you've got HDMI and uh, USB-C port where you can, uh, you can charge it and you can use it on the battery as well. And then you have a mic and uh, combined mic and remote port. Inside the camera, uh, you've got, of course, the battery compartment and then you have one single uh, SD card slot. Now, some people are going to gripe and complain that it doesn't have two SD card slots. But again, this is a consumer-based camera. This is not meant for the pro. As far as function buttons go, there's really only one designated function button. That's right here on top. Uh, it has a uh, front command dial, no rear command dial, like I said. Uh, now you can change some of these buttons to become uh, a different function. Uh, but uh, I find, I, because there is no ISO, ISO dial on here, I, I use uh, the front command dial to change my ISO. Now, as for video, um, I've got to be honest with you. I wanted to, uh, to shoot video with this, and I really wanted to shoot uh, what Fuji says is going to be uh, 1080p at uh, 240 uh, frames a second, so 10 times slow-mo. I, I wasn't able to because this is a pre, almost a pre-pre-production camera, if you will. Um, in fact, this is the only XE4 in the whole country of Malaysia. Um, and it, it came out pretty early, and so the firmware on it uh, didn't have all the complete options. Uh, in fact, um, like most pre-production uh, cameras, the firmware can be a little glitchy. Of course, all that's going to be worked out on the final uh, when you get the camera. But uh, I will say what they say is coming out in this camera is, is pretty impressive for a consumer level camera. Uh, it's going to have uh, DCI 4K at 29.9p, uh, 200 megabits and 10-bit uh, recording using HDMI. If you want to do uh, full HD, 1920 by 1080, you can get 240p. Like I said, that's 10 times uh, slow motion. Uh, the XE4 even shoots F-Log for you video purists. So, you know, it's, a, it's an impressive little unit when it comes to video. Now, is it a X? T4 or an XH1 with the video capabilities? No, it's not. Uh, but is it going to make you amazing uh, videos on your vacation or for your vlog? Yeah, I think it will. So let me transition for a minute and talk about the new lens that's been released today, and that's the 27 millimeter Mark II. Now this new lens is equivalent to a 40 millimeter full frame. It's the most compact and lightest of all the XF glass, weighing in at 84 grams. Now everything about this lens is the same as the Mark I, with the exception of two major factors. One is that they made it weather uh, sealed, which is great. However, the biggest factor for me is that it has an aperture ring now. And you know, for me that made this lens usable because frankly I didn't get into Fuji to use a command dial to change my f-stop. So um, yeah, so I think, it, I think in that sense it's a, it's a real win for, for Fuji for this, for this lens. Now, Talking about this lens and this camera together and talking about this idea of being a minimalist uh, travel kit, I don't think that this lens is necessarily going to be the perfect lens for traveling. I do think Fuji has hit it out of the park with the XE4 as far as a minimalist uh, travel camera. Uh, not so much with this lens though. I think the lens that you're going to need to use with this as a travel camera is going to be the 18 to 55. Uh, that lens is, it will be perfect. It's not too big for the body and it's uh, a fairly fast lens and it gives you uh, a focal length from 18 to, to 55. Now some people are going to love this camera and some probably not. Uh, 
I guess for me, think of it as the difference between, say, a like a pocket knife and a chef knife. Now they both have a purpose. They both are very functional. And a good pocket knife is a good pocket knife. A good chef knife is a good chef knife. But a good pocket knife is a bad chef knife and a, and a chef knife is a very bad pocket knife. You don't want to stick it in your pocket. Well, it's kind of the same way with this camera. The XE4 is a really good travel, a really good lightweight, minimalistic camera. Now, it, it would be a terrible camera if it was meant to take the place of the X-T4. It isn't, and it doesn't. It would be a terrible camera if it meant to take the place of, of any other really uh, positioned camera in the X-Series lineup. It is, unto itself, a, um, a great little camera. So, uh, again, there are going to be some people that are not going to like it. Personally, I think they scored with this. So, so tell me what you think in the comments below. And uh, in the meantime, get out and take some pictures. So it's super tight right here. So I'm going to use the flip screen.